So, aloha guys. Today I have a study for you and uh, we were just talking about it. It's a study that I learned uh, in 1979 when I went to Calvary Chapel at a Bible school up in Twin, Twin Peaks, California, up in the San Bernardino Mountains. And this is probably the most profound study I learned for a life hack of how do I know spiritually. And this is a spiritual life hack. How do I know the right thing to do and how do I know you know, like in what direction to go? How do I know if it's a sin or not? This actually answers those questions. And this morning, I'm going to try to share it with you in the shortest time I've ever shared it, maybe 20 minutes or so. So I want to invite you to join us. I'm Pastor Izzy from Amazing Grace in Kona, Hawaii. And I have a study that I think can help shape your life, change things into really simple to discern ways, things what people struggle with, old believers, and especially young believers, when they're asking me these really good age-old questions, how do I know if this is the right thing to do with my life? And I'm going to show you the answer from the scripture. So if you get out your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 14, we've been talking about Paul bringing out, bearing out this truth about, you know, because a lot of Christians ask this, what about, uh, what do I have to keep the Ten Commandments now that I'm a Christian? Do I have to live under the Levitical law, the 613 statutes in the Old Testament. And Paul actually summed it up, we went over a couple weeks ago, there, it, we're not under the law in the way Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but instead I came to fulfill it. And back in Romans 8, you can go back and do a little reading, Paul says that that law was there to bring us into the knowledge of our sin. And he goes over in greater depth in Galatians chapter 3 through 5, and he explains it was a tutor. A tutor that teaches you you have sin, and now that you know you have sin, you got you, you go, well, what am I going to do about it? And the, and the law leads you to Christ, who was the one who didn't abolish the law, but he fulfilled it. And he became the cursed one on the tree for us, and he took on the curse of the law. So all our sins were paid for through what he did. Now... Paul says we're under a new law, the law of the liberty of the Spirit. And that's the part I want to go over with you today. In this new law of the liber of liberty, it's not liberty to sin. He went over that in great detail. It's liberty from sin. And it's actually liberty to walk now in a newness of life, in a newness of spirit, his Holy Spirit. And I want to go over, how do you know whether something's from the Spirit? How do you really know, you know, what do I do? What is this thing that, that this newness of life that I get to walk in and how do I do it? And Paul went over last week in the first half of chapter 14 about how this new life is looking out for others. You, you look out for them in such a way that you, you determine, we went over this last week, not to stumble your brother. You don't use this liberty to be a stumbling block and you don't want to put a stumbling block in your brother's way, but instead you want to build up your brother. And now it comes down to Paul describing we had to we had to stop last week at verse 14 where paul said i know and i am convinced that nothing is unclean in itself but to him who thinks anything to be unclean to him it is unclean for if because of food your brother is hurt then he says you're no one longer walking according to love he says don't destroy with food him who for whom christ has died therefore do not let what is for you a good thing be spoken of as evil for the kingdom of god is not eating not drinking, but it's what? Righteousness, peace, and what's the third one? I have a daughter named this. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is, the, this is what it is all about. The kingdom of God is not a bunch of rules about what you eat and what you drink. I mean, so many people, I don't know how many cults get into, so are you vegetarian, are you vegan? Do you eat meat? Do you do this? Or do you not eat this? Or do you... And somehow they think by what they eat or don't eat, they're more holy. But that's not the focus of what Jesus came to do and what his spirit wants to bring us into. His spirit wants to bring us into the things that are righteous, peaceful, and bring us joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. These are what I refer to as the three gauges for making a decision that we ignore often. Now Paul's gonna, I'm gonna finish the chapter and come back to these three gauges because they're really important. And I, I'll, I'll show you a, a actual spiritual application, a life hack that really helped a brother decide how would he know the right thing to do when it came to 
what gal should he marry? I mean, this is a legit question. He was, you know, we were in Bible school together, and I'll share that with you in just a minute. But he's, Paul goes on and says, he says, for he who serves in this way, serves, uh, it, he, I'm sorry, he who serves Christ in this way is acceptable to God and approved by men. If you serve God in this way about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, you'll be acceptable to God and you'll be approved by men. So then let us purpose for the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. Don't tear down the work of God for the sake of food. He says, all things indeed are clean, but they are they are, uh, 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 sorry, <clears throat> they are evil for the man who eats and who gives offense. It's not good to eat meat or to drink wine or to do anything by which your brother stumbles. So if you ask me, is it okay to do this? Pastor, can I have a drink or can I ha eat this thing? And you're with some people who you know it's going to stumble. What, what do you think my answer would be? No, don't do it to stumble your brother. I mean, we got to care about our brother more than we care about ourselves. More than we care about our temporary happiness at that moment, making my tongue happy, you know, making my, my uh, you know, self happy with drinking this stuff. He says, look, I, I won't do it if it stumbles my brother. It's not good for you to do this. So if someone asked me, how do I know if it's right to do? Well, I've always taught these really simple three rules. First of all, what's the Bible say? If it, You know, they ask me, is it all right to... To kill my brother. I hate him. I'm mad at him. <laughs> well, let me see. I think that one's covered in the ten, you know, biggies. Thou shalt not commit murder. Yeah, no, you can't do that. Sorry, you might want to, but but that's out. It's off the table. If the word of God already says don't do it, don't come to me and say, Pastor, but is, is it okay for me? Am I an exception? No, <laughs> you are not. The rest of us have to live under that uh, guidance, and so do you. Don't even go there. But... But what about the gray areas? What about the things what the Bible doesn't say specifically? Ever had questions about things that you can't find a verse that says what to do about this? Well, I'm going to bring you to the next thing Paul described. He says, are you looking out for your brother when it comes to making this decision? Or are you only looking out for yourself? You'll get a lot of answers right away if you just use that next spiritual guideline. If the Word of God doesn't address it specifically, then ask yourself, am I wanting to do this and I don't care if it stumbles someone, or am I wanting to do this, and I'm caring about others around me. Because that might stop you from doing certain things just because you got your answer right there. Maybe it was okay for you, but it's not when you see that it could stumble someone around you, so you say, I'll hold off. But what if it doesn't apply in this situation, and you're going, I gotta, I'm not certain. Well, Paul says, listen, there's something that you should know. He says, you, the faith that you have, verse 22, have as your own conviction before God. Happy, it says, is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith. And whatever is not from faith is a sin. Now, I didn't say this. Paul did. But he knows what he's talking about. If you can't do something in faith, you, you, you're going, you know, I don't know if I should do this. And I say, well, can you do it in faith? You feel really good faith about doing that. A lot of believers already get their answer right there. They go, uh, no, I can't do this in faith. I said, well, then don't do it. Because if you can't do it in faith, the Bible says it's sin. There's your answer. Don't even go further. But if you get past that rule of thumb that if you can do it in faith, is it sin? Then you come to this understanding. Could you guys pass that diaper bag, please? <laughs> oh, we got a little one out here needing it. Just wait a minute. This is just an extra credit thing, you know, when you have little ones in the... My, my wonderful grandson, Theo, you can see him on last week's study. Maybe I'll get him out later when, when they're done changing him. But um, well, if you can get past, you can do it in faith. And this is where it kind of came down to real application. I just learned this as a new believer at Bible College, and I was all excited. You know, we're studying Romans with... Uh, I think T. Thornton was our teacher, wonderful, godly man that taught us this verse. And he says, you know, God has given us these other things to help discern in those areas of where we're not certain. These three gauges, the, the three rules of thumb, so to speak, of how do I know if this is the right thing? And, and he went on and he taught us this from Romans chapter 14. This page just, this is the one that you can... Um, <laughs> 
Man, this Bible is well used. But um, little breeze just blew away my page. But he said, these are the three things. And, and he taught us that it's not about rules. It's not about eating or drinking. The kingdom of God is about what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So one of the guys in Bible school at that time, he came, he said, you know, I know in the scriptures it says, don't join a believer with a non-believer. That's what, what fellowship does light have with darkness. They don't, they don't combine. So you have to be believers with believers. And, and I'm here at Bible school. And he had, at, at Bible school, there was two different sisters at the Bible college that he, he said, man, I like both of them. You know, they're both wonderful gals in the Lord. Um, but how do you know which is the right one? Like this is and this is a legit life question, I think. You know, guys are maybe gals. You already know the right one, right when you meet him. <laughs> but um, but for guys, they're just going. I don't know. I don't know which one. And they want to make a good decision. So, he's like, "How do I know which girl is the right girl to marry?" They're both Christians, so it's okay to have you know, like as far as I can tell from everything I know from the Word of God, light with light, it's okay. They're both okay. How do I know which is the right one? I said, well, he, he just taught us this. So, well, there's not just one gauge. Is it right? But there's also two other gauges. It's like having gauges in your car. You know, you got these. Now, it's, I know it's a little weird today because everything's digital and they don't really have they have these idiot lights. But when I was growing up, we had, a, we had a thing called an oil pressure gauge right on the dash. And we had an RPM gauge. And we had, we had these temperature gauges. These three different gauges. And... Guys, I was trained by my uncle when it came to driving. Pay attention to the gauges. Because if they're not in the right position, if the thing is like pegging the hot on the on the temperature gauge, I mean, it's like full red. What does it mean? Just keep driving? Everything's all good? No, it's a warning. Pull over, man. The engine's going to blow up. Or if the oil pressure gauge goes poof and drops down, you need to pull over and get some oil in that engine. you got a problem. And it's, these gauges are there to point these things out to you. Don't perceive there's something wrong with the engine. If you use these three gauges that I'm going to show you here from Romans 14, verse 17, then these three gauges may tell you when to stop and not proceed. And, and, they, and they'll be a safeguard for you spiritually. They really will. So this guy goes, well, I know I can marry either girl. So on the first gauge, it's okay. They're both, the gauge is still good on both gals as he considered if i married this one or if i married this one i said well what about the other two gauges which one do you the next gauge is peace do you have peace about being with this gal or with this gal and he, he just look at the gauge in your mind which one do you have peace about do you have more peace about one or the other and he sat there humming hmm, hmm, hmm. he goes no i don't i mean i like equal they're both godly women. I like them both. They both have good character. They're both, you know, he's going over. No, I, I mean, I could be, I have peace of I, I said, okay, third gauge. Remember, there's three. Don't forget, third one. What's the third one? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Which one would you have more joy being with for the rest of your life? And you know what happened right then? It's like the light bulb went on. Bing! He's like, I got it. I got it. Because one of the gals, when he thought about that third gauge, and the other gal, he's like, this one I would have more joy being with if I was with her. I go, there's your answer. And he went back, and he married her, by the way. And, and to my knowledge, they're still together, happily serving the Lord. I think, praise the Lord, man. What, for a, 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 as big a, I mean, besides coming to Christ, I think who you marry is probably the second most impacting decision that you will make as a man in this life. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it will affect the rest of everything that you do, Right. It's like literally the most. So you want to get this one right. But if you ignore the three gauges, then you're running your engine through life and you're not paying attention to maybe a danger. God could be telling you something. And it's as simple. In the Holy Spirit, it's as simple as him not giving you as much peace or as much joy. Maybe it's right either way you go. Should I take this career path or should I take this career path? And you feel it could be right either way. You don't know. You need to read on to the next gauge. You need to go, do I have peace more about going this direction or this direction? A lot of believers don't even have to get to the third gauge, I'm telling you. 
They might have struggled with the first one about righteousness, but after that, as soon as they go on to the second one, they go, you know, I have more peace going this direction and no peace going that way. Well, there's your answer. You don't even need to go to the third one, the joy. But sometimes you're going to come down to, yeah, I, it's, I know it's right in the Lord, in the Holy Ghost. I know it's right either way. I have peace about either way. And now it comes down to that third gauge. Don't ignore that third gauge. It's there for a reason. Because sometimes the very subtlest things you don't know the answer to until you use that gauge. You look at that gauge and you're like, you know what? I, I would have more joy if I did this. There's your answer. As simple as it is, that, that spiritual teaching that I learned in Bible school in 1979 has stuck with me, has got me through so many life decisions and help me know the right way to go, the right thing to do. In circumstances with dealing with people, I'm like, I don't, Lord, I don't know how to do it. And he just goes, what's the rule of thumb? What's the three gauges? Forget it. Just go back to the three gauges. Righteousness, peace, and joy. What would be the right thing? to? And man, a lot of times I don't even get past the first one. The righteousness thing. Now, righteousness is not self-righteousness. Righteousness means to be in right standing with God. It's a, it's a vertical relationship that you have with God. And it's being in the right way with Him. If I do this, will I be right with Him? That's righteousness we're talking about. Not self-righteousness. We're talking about righteousness in, in, in the Holy Ghost with Him. If I do this thing, will I be right with Him? And you might get your answer right then. If you just ask Him, would I be right to do this with you, Lord? And if you don't know, then go on to the next gauge. Will I have more peace if I do this or if I do that? And then if it's equal, go to the third one. And you know what? I have not found one believer, even the old believers I've, that heard me teach this year, Sherry Coven, I told, she, she said, I was like, should I do the whole gauge? Thing? Of course, man, that's a great study. She's heard me teach this 40 years ago. She's like, and as a believer that's walked in Christ for four decades, she's like, that's a good study. Do that again. People can hear that again. That's a... That's one of those ones that you could just you just need to be reminded so you keep staying in the spirit and you keep making good life decisions. So may I pray that you would take away this day, these three gauges, you would apply them in your life. Just use them. Romans 14, 17. It's the kingdom of God. It's not meat nor drink. It's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So I want to impart that to you. Pray you can take it with you and start using it just as I have for over four decades. May it just lead you and guide you by by the Holy Spirit, life in His Spirit. Be blessed and aloha from Hawaii. Come back next week. If you don't mind sharing this to somebody you know that needs it, I would really appreciate it. Just give it a share, give it a like, and uh, a, or host a watch party if you want, and uh, help me get the word out. And I thank everybody out there in the digital world that has been helping me get the word of God out from our little house here in Hawaii. It's a true blessing to us. So blessings and aloha.